Hey, today I'm talking about three not so good 90s remakes of three 1940s iconic Christmas films. And the names of the three films that I am talking about today are Clarence, The Preacher's Wife, and Christmas in Connecticut. The first up is Clarence. This is a 1990 technically sequel to It's a Wonderful Life, though so that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And really, it's kind of just a remake of The Bishop's Wife, which is what The Preacher's Wife is also a remake of. Yeah, it's all messy. Anyway, the basic premise is, so you remember the angel that helped out Jimmy Stewart in It's a Wonderful Life? Well, turn Turns out he hasn't been feeling the best since doing that really good thing 50 years ago and he doesn't want to help anyone else because he just doesn't. And so some other angels trick him into helping this family whose dad recently passed away. It's not really a Christmas movie which is weird. Like they do have some Christmas decorations around but like it's football season. That's a whole plot line. It's definitely a made for TV movie and I went into it kind of being like oh this is gonna be really bad. But it honestly it wasn't the worst. There is charm to this at times. Everything with the teenage boy was just atrocious. Not because the kid did bad, he did fine enough for a TV movie. It was just like the most stereotypical really bad dad talk to the kid and it was just terrible. And then it was so clear like how they were going to use the son to help save the business at the end. And it was just like it took them so long to realize that. And I'm like why are they not building towards this at all? They had a setup at the beginning and then a payoff at the end. I did like the little girl in the movie. I thought she was good and fun and interesting, but she just kind of disappeared in the second half of the movie. I was also just really annoyed because I feel like this would have worked better had they had zero connection to It's a Wonderful Life. Because like they also change a bunch of rules. Like they even specifically say, hey, since you last been down, we've changed some rules. And it's like, what are you doing? Why even be connected to It's a Wonderful Life if you're just going to ignore most of the stuff from It's a Wonderful Life? So yeah, I I don't know. I didn't really care for this film. It's not the worst. The other two films are worse. But like, yeah, no, it's yeah, not great. So yeah, this wasn't a good film. I don't recommend it. Unless like you super love It's a Wonderful Life. And then I still don't recommend it because it just kind of ignores everything from It's a Wonderful Life. So yeah, no, I don't recommend it. The next up is... The Preacher's Wife. This is a 1992 film starring Denzel Washington and Whitney Houston. And the basic premise is this one is actually a remake of The Bishop's Wife. And... <sighs> I feel like I would have enjoyed this film more had I not just watched The Bishop's Wife for the first time ever and had I not really loved The Bishop's Wife. Because like they make a lot of changes, which that's fair, but I feel like they made changes for the worse. Like a big thing that I really didn't care for is the fact that they made the angel into a fish out of water story. So he's just so confused about all of these modern things like, oh, what's a computer? Oh, what is this thing? And then like he has money to pay for stuff. That's a big point in the original. He's like, I'm an angel. Why would I have money? And like, yeah, Denzel Washington is definitely charming. He's good there. But the lack of confidence is the part that just kills me. Because that was a big part of the charm from Cary Grant is that he was just confident wherever he went. And he left like a tidal wave of people just being like, oh, what's this guy up to? And they didn't have that here. And I'm like, why not? That was fun. That was charming. That was interesting. Also, there were no special effects and I was really sad about that. I don't know. There just wasn't the right kind of charm with this movie. There was also a lot of singing, which makes sense. You have Whitney Houston. You have her in the film. Let her sing a bunch. And I'll be honest in that I'm not really a huge Whitney Houston fan music wise. There's no arguing that she's a very talented artist. It's just not my genre of music. So all of those singing scenes were lost on me. I also just don't think they really added a whole lot to the movie. Like if you're a fan of her I can see how they would but just like they didn't really progress the plot a lot. I do think I would have liked this movie more had I not just watched The Bishop's Wife. It's not bad it's just they made so many frustrating changes that I couldn't really get over my frustration with all of the changes. So yeah I again didn't like this movie and I would maybe recommend it. If you like Denzel Washington and Whitney Houston especially if you like Whitney Houston's music then I would. Honestly yeah I would recommend it in that case. But if you're not eh, 
And lastly is Christmas in Connecticut. This is a 1992 film and it is actually Arnold Schwarzenegger's one and only film that he has ever directed. And it's fine. Honestly, his direction wasn't the worst. This film just kind of has a lot of other issues. I do again think that I would have potentially liked this movie more had I not just seen the original and enjoyed the original. They didn't update it well. Like instead of having it be a magazine columnist who's a fake cook, it's now a fake TV show where she doesn't actually cook. And in the pre-Food Network days, I definitely think this works really well because, you know, Food Network actually had real people who know how to cook and stuff. Chris Christopherson is the male lead in this and like he did exactly what Schwarzenegger wanted him to do which is to be like a big tough manly man man and like they took away a lot of his agency because like he doesn't give a shit about any of this food stuff like the whole setup. The premise is that this guy saves a person and then a food tv show thing is like hey let's bring this national hero onto our show to boost ratings and so they do that but she's a big fake and yeah yeah, I don't know. It's whatever. There was a lot of humor too that was just like people shouting at each other. Like the main woman's assistant is just like in a constant fight with her boyfriend. And like there's a lot of plot about that. And it's just like you could easily take this out and it would be a lot better. Also, there's like a little 10 year old boy who just exists to be obnoxious. The main woman in it was good. It's just kind of like everything else around it. I'm like, I just don't care. Also, her producing partner was just so obnoxious and the worst. Yeah. No, I really didn't care for this film and I don't recommend it. Unless you're really curious about what it's like to see Arnold Schwarzenegger direct, because I mean, that's fair. Alrighty, now for today's rankings. First up, we got Clarence sitting at number 218 in the meh section. And then not too terribly far behind is The Preacher's Wife sitting at number 224, also in the meh section. And then bringing up the rear right behind that is Christmas in Connecticut 1992 sitting at number 225, again in the meh section. And this is at a total of 258 old movies so far this year.